seem a little strange that I, as a woman and a feminist, am standing here talking to you about men. So let me explain. I've been a feminist since my early teens, which was quite a long time ago. I work with women and girls on their rights in many different parts of the world. But it wasn't until I was standing in the supermarket next to the bananas with my son George, <laughs> who's a little bit older than this now, but he was about 10 at the time, and he looked up at me and he said, Mum, why are you obsessed with women's rights? What about me? And it started me thinking about men's role in feminism and gender equality. My partner and I had been really clear that we wanted our daughter Rosa to have as many chances in life as our son. I had seen too many girls in different parts of the world who were denied those chances. I knew that, for example, one woman in three, one woman in three faces violence from an intimate partner, usually a man. And that hasn't changed since I was a young woman. I also knew that only 22% of parliamentarians globally are women. And even in the UK, the gender pay gap is 19%. I could go on, lots more statistics about the inequalities between men and women. But it did start me thinking, my son's question did start me thinking, well, do men have a role in this? I'd always seen men as part of the problem, but could they possibly also be part of the solution? So when I was visiting girls in Pakistan and other countries, I started watching the boys. And I remember very clearly being in South Africa, for example, and being in a health clinic, talking to girls about reproductive rights. And outside, I could see these little heads bobbing up and down as the boys looked in to see what was going on, why couldn't we be involved as well, asking the same question as my son, what about me? So I started talking to the men when I'd gone out to visit the women. Um, I met Cristobal in the Dominican Republic, who'd come together as part of a group of men who were concerned about rising violence against women in their community. Um, that violence had often happened because the women had gone abroad to work, and when they came back, the men didn't have a role, they didn't know what to do. He said his own father had been violent towards his mother, he didn't want that to continue for the next generation. Or Stephen, who's part of a campaign that I've been involved in called Men Care, which is about getting men more involved in the home. Stephen's from Sri Lanka. You see him here with his two children. Um, his wife also went to work abroad, and he wanted to look after the children, despite the women in the family saying, you don't know what to do, you'd be hopeless, you don't know how to do anything. And he didn't at first. He didn't know what to do about taking them to school, what they wore, what they ate, what happened when they were ill. This is him in a hospital. But actually, by the time his wife came back, he was quite clear that he wanted to share responsibilities with her. And he said, if there's one thing that money can't buy, that is the love of a child. I talked to many, many more men as well as women um, in the course of researching my book on feminism and men. And I have become increasingly convinced that we need to involve men in a number of different ways in work on gender equality and women's rights. So what are those ways? Um, I'm just going to give you a few examples. I think the first thing to say is that it's really important that we don't forget that we're working with women and girls as well. That there's a possibility of taking resources, taking time, of men doing the mansplaining thing um, and women getting left out. We really need to keep the focus on women and girls in this work. So to work with women and girls, to work with men and boys and to work with them together. The second thing is that we need to start really early. Um, when, when boys are very young, when girls are very young. And there are some great programmes out there that are already doing this. For example, here in the UK, there's a programme called Great Men Value Women, which goes into schools and talks to young men about what's it like to be a man? How do you feel about girls? What do you feel about the influence in your society? And there are other programmes around the world like that. For example, Coaching Boys into Men in India, which does the same thing, but through sport, through cricket, in fact. Um, I think the next thing that we need to think about is getting men to clean the toilets. Um, there is no country in the world where women and men do an equal amount of unpaid work in the home, whether that's childcare or domestic work. Um, and if we could change that, it would not only be good for men and women, it would also mean a revolution in our workplace as well as in our home. 
so we started to explore as part of research for a state, the first ever State of the World's Fathers that I've been involved in, um, what that would mean. And actually we found that fatherhood is the one point in a man's life where change is really possible because he's thinking about himself as a father, what his father was like, what his children might be like. Um, and again, there are some wonderful projects around that too. So in Rwanda, there's um, a project with an organisation called Ramwek which works with men before their fathers. And the women in the community have made these wonderful daddy dolls so that the men can ch practice changing nappies and dropping the babies when they're not actually real babies and working out how it all works. Um, so that's a, a fantastic project, and many others like it. Um, I think the other thing we need to do is to ensure that the f what, lots, there's a lot of legislation now that's in favour of women's rights, but we need to ensure that that legislation gets enacted on the ground. And in order to do that, we need to work with men in power. That might be presidents and CEOs, but it might also be imams, faith leaders, community leaders. And again, there are some programmes doing exactly that kind, of, that kind of thing. I think finally, we need to persuade men that this is good for them too, because men are not going to change unless they also see that they benefit. I was talking to a young man called Luis in the uh, Dominican Republic who said to me, Gender equality makes me happy. And it's quite clear that gender inequality not only makes women suffer, but it also makes men suffer too. Men die younger than women. They're often not in touch with their emotions. They're often not in touch with their children. So gender equality also benefits men. And I do think this is beginning to, this is beginning to change. So I've met lots of young men and women who call themselves feminists. I think the younger generation... The, the mine are much happier to call men feminists as well as women feminists. I think that's a great change. Whether they call themselves pro-feminist or feminist, I don't really mind. Um, I think there are fantastic campaigns out there, like the United Nations He for She campaign, which gets men to sign up in support of women's rights, and over half a million men around the world have already signed up. I was in Delhi last November with 1,200 people from 700 organisations in 92 countries. And what were they talking about? They were talking about men and gender equality. They were talking about how to build a better society by involving men and boys. It was a fantastic conference. TED is about changing the world. And I'm clear about one thing. We women have changed the world beyond our grandmother's wildest dreams. But there's such a long way to go still. And I don't want my son's question, why me, to remain hanging for the next generation of boys and girls. So I'd, I'd like men to stand up to other men. I'd like them to say, enough. Enough violence against women. Enough sexism. Enough discrimination. Enough of men holding all the power. Enough of women and girls as second-class citizens. Thank you very much.